you hold on to this copy of the rest of your dream and give it back to me tomorrow? Don't give it away, though. I'm afraid I won't bring it with me. Okay. Guys. I wonder whether or not it would be worthwhile to reflect on the Sandman wine. Oh, yeah. Mm. In what way? The port. Mm. Uh, in 1948, a friend of mine, Stuart, Stuart Greenberg, and I were freshmen at St. John. And it was a holiday, and we didn't we stayed in. And so it was evening, and um, I said, you know, isn't it curious the way Plato is using home? And a high point. He said, well, I, you know, I'm not the uh, low in Homer. <coughs> Why don't we just read it? I said, no. Why don't we read it every time we find a quote in Plato that we're looking for and identify it? Let's see what it's saying in Homer. Let's see what we the context hmm. of what's going on in Homer. And so he said, wait a minute. He said, I happen to have a good bottle of wine. Oh. And that was the sand in the oh. wine. Noble. Yes. No, noble. Uh, right. right? So hmm. we opened up Plato and the key quote we landed on, as you all know, it's the one in book seven <clears throat> where Socrates talks about what it's like for those living in the cave. Oh. And he quotes Achilles. Mm -hmm. And Achilles, of course, mm -hmm. is making that statement that I much prefer to be the poorest uh, slave to a landless lord than be master of all the dead that lie here. And we said, wait a minute. Um, why is Plato using that in terms of the Republic when he's talking about the allegory of the cave in the underworld? Oh, so we went back in the text and reflected and had some fun. And we both came to the same obvious conclusion. In no way would Plato want to be a king in the everyday world. And that took a whole different view of what Plato was doing and, what, and of course, what Homer was doing. And so, so it was a great evening. And so every month in a while I celebrated by opening up a bottle of sand in the morning. So that's the background to it. Yeah, that was just good. How shall we get yeah. into Plato and Pierre and Stewart? The time in. Nancy has a book that has nearly all the answers. <laughs> she has That's one wrote of the commentary on the time in. Oh, so, yes. yeah. Okay. Uh, Whoa. So good. I, we heard you come up a most distinguished one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Pierre, I don't know where you want to start, but I like the first line. Well, what about it? Well, because if analogies is that which the universe has generated, then we are beginning to have one, two, three 
and now we're looking at the fourth term to find out what's going to be generated in this. Yeah. Yes. I mean, let's vote to John Agree? I think yeah, we right. have unanimity. Well, where's if the universe in the whole te the the key is that the a quote that uh, the universe is generated through analogy, and one of the most beautiful analogies is that is the mean analogy. But here he has one, two, and three, and where's the Oh, that's what the meaning is that uh, this is the generation of the universe. Take what you said and read the first paragraph. <clears throat> Keep in mind what you just said. Go. One, two, three. But where, my dear, time is, is the four of our guests of yesterday, our hosts of today. And if that relates to Yesterday was four. There's Today no is three. Term. Yeah, three. There's four. No fourth term. There's no fourth term. Oh. What does that mean? That would mean it's a mean analogy. That would mean it's a mean analogy. Right. One of the most beautiful <clears throat> they start out with. But wait a minute. Thanks. Does that exclude the idea of what yesterday must mean? If so, it creates a mystery. are there four people that are prominent in the Republic? But where is the fourth? He's out praying. No. <laughs> uh, Adamantus. Glaucon and Socrates. But, but, but the... But the fourth, right, I mean, traditionally, the way it's explored is that there's a retelling of the Republic on the day after the actual discussion took place, and that discussion had four, four people besides Socrates, that Socrates is recounting the discussion of the day before, too, right? And then there's a third day in which three out of the, those four show up and have another discussion, which is the Timaeus, mm -hmm. with Socrates. And therefore? Therefore... But it's a significance of it. Mm. Or who is, and who is that guy, and what is the No, 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 that's where you're supposed to speculate. <laughs> Don't give it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say it's Plato, that's a major... Is but he a, wasn't... Present yesterday, and he's not present in the Phaedo too. Well, that, it's, well, we don't know who it is. <coughs> well, if the mean term is recollection, yes, I would say that the difference in in power between a three-term analogy and a four-term analogy, and if the three is supposed to represent the three-term analogy for the for the Timaeus, and then you have the light and the world and the light and the mind as a four part analogy or something like that. I don't know. Just a following upon your coattail and nothing more. Is there a significant four part analogy in, in, the, um, in the Republic? Yeah, the divided yeah, line. Divided, the divided line. line. So that's what I thought. So, and here he's talking about the power of a mean analogy, a three-term analogy. It just, yeah. So throw that in. And the queen and king analogy. 
Jesus and me. I mean, I love Jesus. So Unless we're just doing first now. To the Republic, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. right? So what point is he making by connecting it with the Republic? Uh, yeah. Right, he recalls the whole training of the philosopher King, does he not? Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a part missing. <laughs> Just look what you call what he said. When he starts talking about fear, you know it's a TV. At uh, 19 B and C, he's now talking about, he's reviewing the polity, this, the idea of the state he generated. Agreed? Agreed. So he's setting up the condition. He's saying, you know what's missing? We're not testing the Republic. We have to put the Republic in motion. It's like a human being. We've described the human being as a physique, but we haven't put him into motion. It's a static picture. We have to put him to the test. Is that what he's saying? Take a look. Yes or no? Come on. Yes. Right. Do you want to read it, Mark? Go ahead. And now? And now, in the next place, listen to what my feeling is Go ahead. with regard to the polity we have described. I may compare my feeling to something of this, uh, polity is a fancy word for republic. I may mean, compare my feelings to something of this kind. Suppose, for instance, that on seeing beautiful creatures, whether works of art or actually alive but in repose, a man should be moved with desire to behold them in motion and vigorously engaged in some such exercise as seem suitable to their physique. Well, that is the very feeling I have regarding the state we have described. Gladly would I listen to anyone who should depict in words our state contending against others in those struggles which states wage, in how proper a spirit it enters upon war, and how in its warring it exhibits qualities such as befit its education and training in its dealings with each several state, whether in respect of military actions or in respect of verbal negotiations. And herein, Critias and Hermocrates, I am conscious of my own inability ever to magnify sufficiently our citizens and our state. Now, in this inability of mine, there's nothing surprising. But I, well, I think that's it. Right? No. No. Keep reading. You better. Okay. That's a long paragraph. Okay. Um, you, you might. Uh, Uh, I don't know, maybe it would be worth reading the whole thing, but um, at exactly 20, he introduces his thesis. Right, section 20, do you have it? Which, uh, which part of section 20? <coughs> Thus, there remains only that class which is your complexion, a class which, alike by nature and nurture, shares the qualities both of the others. For our friend Timaeus is a native of a most well-governed state, Italian, like hers. 
and inferior to none of its citizens, either in property, rank, and not only has he occupied the highest offices and posts of honor in his state, here we are now, he has also attained, in my opinion, the very <coughs> summit of eminence in all branches of philosophy. So, to Critias, and all of us here know that he's no novice in any of the subjects we're discussing. Right? Therefore, what's his goal? We need to find the state, the kind of state we described, and a state of war, and exhibiting all the qualities which belong to it through the conflict and war. And in diplomacy. Critias here mentioned a story, he said, of the past that meets these conditions. So the opening of the time is, right, is represented by two reportedly well-versed philosophers. They know a parallel between the Republic and the test of the Republic in a past legend, and that's the first part of the Timaeus. Now Timaeus, therefore, has to pick it up because his job, as you just see in the quote, Um, he is, in our opinion, the very summit and eminent and of pardon me, the very summit of eminence in all branches of philosophy. Nice. So therefore, when time is comes in, what rank should we give him? We should see the summit. He's the Platon. Highest. 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 Right? Um, so therefore, what's this nonsense about one, two, three, four? In my text, it's ruled out. You guys have a, a later text, the earlier text, it's not there. <laughs> I think it was ripped out by someone who I was working with, so it's... Or, there's something missing. And Timaeus wasn't present, Critias wasn't present. That's a puzzle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. ah. <clears throat> and, and then you have the Parmenides, where, again, there's three principal people in the Parmenides. I don't know that dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, I got a puzzle with this one. So therefore, look here. Look at the way it starts with this section on the Timaeus, shall we? Where Timaeus comes in, and you know where he comes in? On that great section? Yeah, 27. What story should we adopt, Critias, in preference to this? He's finished it. For the story will be admirably suited to the festival of the goddess which is now being held. Good heavens, another Panathenaea. Mm -hmm. Because of its connection with her. Mm. And the fact that it is not no invented fable, but a genuine history is all important. You must therefore now deliver your discourse because we must dis discover other stories and we shouldn't let the old ones slip by. <coughs> well, uh, Critias comes in, okay, Socrates, the order of the feast as we have arranged it, seeing that Timaeus is our best astronomer and made it his special task to learn about the nature of the universe it seems good that he should speak out, beginning with the origin of the cosmos 
and ending with a generation of mankind. That's the task of Timaeus. Dear, isn't that strange? Yes. What is he strange? Well, given this whole desire on Socrates to see his state put into action, what is the origin of the universe and going through all that and ending with the generation of mankind? How does they answer that task? Well, he doesn't generate a state. No, there's no state in the time. But it, see, it presupposes that's an order of the feast, and that's why Timaeus must be the next one. So would you not agree we need to know something about the feast? <laughs> It's a festival to the goddess. How indeed, and where shall we discover other stories if we let this one slip? It's an occasion for telling stories. Shall we finish the first story? And Timaeus has another story. Right, but they didn't, that wasn't set up. They're out. stories. <laughs> Unless that was an agreement made the day before that wasn't mentioned. Well, that's what it, no, no, that's the language that's being used. So, uh, just to uh, continue, Critias, we have, to, we have to get rid of Critias, you see, and get into Timaeus, and the last paragraph of him is at 27. There's a key sentence uh, that is at about 27A8. Take a look at the, uh, the purpose. Critias is saying, seeing that Timaeus is our best astronomer and has made it his special task to learn about the nature of the universe. It seems good to us that he should speak first, watch now, beginning with the origin of the cosmos and ending with a generation of mankind. After him, I am to follow, taking over from him the mankind already as it's been created in his speech, and taking over from you a select number of superlatively well-trained men. Mm. What? After him, what should he do? He should take over from him this image or this study of mankind as it's been created in his speech and taking over from you, he's talking to Socrates, a select number of superlatively well-trained men, right? Men, superlatively well-trained. Then in accordance with the word and law of Solomon, I'm to bring these before ourselves as before a court of judges and make them citizens of the state of ours. Provide <coughs> them as Athenians of that bygone age that we just discussed and talked about in mythical terms. That's been revealed to us by the record of these sacred writings. Watch now. And hereafter, I am to proceed with my discourse as if I were speaking to men 
who already are citizens of the men of Athens. What does that mean? It means there's another, there has to be another volume, another part of the time is that's missing. Or is, is that, is it the Critias? That's the Critias. Wow. We never read that. How can we never read that? Well, that's because we're sloppy. <laughs> Right? Agree? It's, un Agreed. it's unfinished unless you top, put on top of it. Agreed. Agreed. Right? Wow. All right? <laughs> what does Sack say? Bounteous and magnificent. It's just, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of, kind of uh, feast of speech of which I am Ah, I am to be requited because he did the Republic. Mm -hmm. So time is at your task, it seems, to speak next after you've duly invoked the gods. So what, come on, what's our task? If you get the first part, I right, have to assume that the battle is going to show us how the men in the Republic then function within the situation of war mm -hmm. so they can show all of the highest qualities. Ah, that Critias is going to come in after time is and balance it because through the two of them together we're going to, we're going to find well-suited men who have been trained throughout these two speeches and bring them into the Critias so that we can then see the result of this fine speech. It's not done. Critias is interrupted. But it's a good thing to get into. You think we ought to do it sometimes? Or actually, uh, what's nice about the Critias is that we can read it before we've been into the Chinese, since we've been in the Chinese before, and it's short. You want to start it now? <laughs> okay. There are two parts to the Chinese. All right. Good old 27C. And that goes until 29E. This is the introduction. Right? Presupposes that you come over and discuss it and see how it relates, because that's the condition for Timaeus' speech, which then begins at 27 C or D. Right? Actually, it's uh, just before E, so. The invocation? Okay. Yeah. Want to do it? Sure. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Nay, as to that, Socrates, all men who possess even a small share of good sense call upon God always at the outset of every undertaking, be it small or great. We, therefore, who are purposing to deliver a discourse concerning the universe, how it was created, or happily is uncreated, must needs invoke gods and goddesses, if so be that we are not utterly demented, praying that all we say may be approved by them in the first place, and secondly, by ourselves. Grant then that we have thus duly invoked the deities. Ourselves we must also invoke, so to proceed, that you may most easily learn, and I may most clearly expound my views regarding the subject before us. Now, first of all, we must, in my judgment, make the following distinction. What is that 
which is existent always and has no becoming? And what is that which is becoming always and never is existent? Now one of these is apprehensible by thought with the aid of reasoning, since it is ever uniformly existent, whereas the other is an object of opinion with the aid of unreasoning sensation, since it becomes and perishes and is never really existent. Again, everything which becomes must of necessity become owing to some cause. For without a cause, it is impossible for anything to attain becoming. But when the artificer of any object, in forming its shape and quality, keeps his gaze fixed on that which is uniform, using a model of this kind, that object, executed in this way, must of necessity be beautiful. But whenever he gazes at that which has come into existence and uses a created model, the object thus executed is not beautiful. Now the whole heaven or cosmos, or if there is any other name which it specially prefers, by that let us call it, so be its name what it may, we must first investigate concerning it that primary question which has to be investigated at the outset in every case. Namely, whether it has existed always having no beginning or generation, or whether it has come into existence, having begun from some beginning. It has come into existence, for it is visible and tangible and possessed of a body. And all such things are sensible, and things sensible being apprehensible by opinion with the aid of sensation, come into existence as we saw and are generated. <coughs> And that which has come into existence must necessarily, as we say, have come into existence by reason of some cause. Now, to discover the maker and father of this universe were a task indeed, and having discovered him to declare him unto all men were a thing impossible. However, let us return and inquire further concerning the cosmos. After which of the models did its architect construct it? Was it after that which is self-identical and uniform, or after that which has come into existence? Now, if so be that this cosmos is beautiful and its constructor good, it is plain that he fixed his gaze on the eternal. But if otherwise, which is an impious supposition, his gaze was on that which has come into existence. But it is clear to everyone that his gaze was on the eternal. For the cosmos is the most beautiful of all that has come into existence, and he the best of all the causes. So having in this wise come into existence, it has been constructed after the pattern of that which is apprehensible by reason and thought and is self-identical. Again, if these premises be granted, it is wholly necessary that this cosmos should be a copy of something. Now, in regard to every matter, it is most important to begin at the natural beginning. Accordingly, in dealing with a copy and its model, we must affirm that the accounts given will themselves be akin to the diverse objects which they serve to explain. Those which deal with what is abiding and firm and discernible by the aid of thought will be abiding and unshakable. And insofar as it is possible and fitting for statements to be irrefutable and invincible, they must in no wise fall short thereof. Whereas the accounts of that which is copied after the likeness of that model and is itself a likeness will be analogous thereto and possess likelihood. For as being is to becoming, so is truth to belief. Wherefore, Socrates, if in our treatment of a great host of matters regarding the gods and the generation of the universe, we prove unable to give accounts that are always in all respects self-consistent and perfectly exact, be not thou surprised. Rather, we should be content if we can furnish accounts that are inferior to none in likelihood, remembering that both I who speak and you who judge are but human creatures, 
so that it becomes us to accept the likely account of these matters and forbear to search beyond it. Therefore, this is a likely account. Yeah. By the way, um, I, I have a question about this text. Could you tell me, uh, go back to uh, 29. Um, what does he mean when he says, was it after that which is self-identical and uniform? What does that mean? Oh. Is, is that a good translation, by the way? I do believe it deals with the issue of uh, autons. The autons? Huh? Post the autons? Actually, so just take a look. <laughs> Because that's actually alto. Oh. Well, it should be. Yeah, and then there's hosaltos, which has an alto in it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's doubled. That, that idea of altos is doubled in expression there. Oh, what does that mean? Go ahead. Divine luminosity. No, no, come on, try it. But how, would you, how would you deal with it? I think this is one of his ways of referring to the nature of ultimate reality. Or the self. The ultimate reality is the model. Pardon. Or what? The self. I don't know what you're saying. Self. Oh. What does that mean? She's adding something. Uh, is that central? No. Yeah. In what way? Because it's what we are. But, but it doesn't look like that in the translation. Oh. Well, no, self-identical. What does that mean? To have an uh, I guess that's there. Okay, self-identical. Okay. Okay, everybody understands that expression, and we can skip it. No. No? Isn't that the one that's the self-same? Is he, move. Look, is he talking about the one that is the, that is identical? That's the self same. Yeah. No. No. Well, help out. No, because how would you read it? Come on, stay on the text. Which Stephanus one were you? He doesn't talk about the one. Twenty-nine. Which Paper on the famous quote. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine A. A one. No. Okay. If I if I had it, I'd offer it. Really. What would you do with it? Um. Well, you could say after that which hmm. is according to itself. Oh. That which is its self according to self, or that which is according to the self. How do you? Hmm. What do you do with the hotel that Oh, it's an particular, it's a... Holding as itself. Yeah. So it's holding to itself, it's holding itself. Echo. Well, it's also, it's like... Um, it's an article participle construction, right? Look. It's, it's it's a, uh, would you agree it's rather important? Yeah. Only to those who want to know themselves. <laughs> no, yes, it's, it's the most important. Themselves. Well, then it ought to be clear. How would you try? Would you go along with like what Barbara just did? Yeah. Did you part eight? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, David? According to itself, uh, holding, maintaining itself. Maintaining itself. Echo? Like the, um, or holding self? No, that which is well, holding. Well, you made a dirty joke about that. According to that. <laughs> <laughs> holding self. No, not just holding itself, because there's a plural, ta alta, <laughs> holding or holding to the things that are right in here. Fear, I just want to make a great point that uh, there's a construction, that which is holding according to the same things, because there's a plural, ta alta, according to the same, or the self things, however you want to deal with the plural in but, translation. But the neuter plural, you know, of, say, any adjective can be translated as if it were a substantive. So I don't know that I'd necessarily go with 
that it has to be translated as a plural. That's right. Well, it is a plural form. That's right. Yeah, I mean, but they often translate the goods as the good. That's what I'm saying. In Smythe, you can have a neuter plural functioning as a neuter singular. I don't mind. But you also have the very express singular of the to echo. Right. Uh, that which is. So that supports my position rather than well, supposed to your system. Okay. Well, I like both of them. You got the one and the many combined into one. What do you think about I, don't, I think According it's to the, the, the Bible. Smite. The Bible, no. <laughs> Smite. It's the Greek Our Greek. own understanding is the Bible. He who must be obeyed. She's making a point about your reference to the plural that can also be indicated as the neuter singular. Yes or no? If so, what follows? And if it is then if it is used that way in other works, mm -hmm. then it's consistent with the way Plato was using that term. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. And, and uh, Ingmar was saying the toe in front, the toe in front of it is a singular neuter, right? Yes. And it goes with echon, right? right. Which is and but it also is to kata tauta kai posautos echon, right? Mm -hmm. So that which holds itself according to such a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to itself and in a self in a in a selfly way, as so self selfly. Self similar fashion. Look here. <coughs> Sorry. All we're dealing with is whether the idea of the self plays a, a major element in the time is or not. Mm. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. It's not important. As opposed no, to no, that no, no. Which, it is as important. As opposed to that which yeah. is becoming. Yes. Yeah. Right. And the contrast is uh, with that which is becoming. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's the idea of the mind of God. Because the self is not that which ever it becomes. And he's an other than the self. Mm -hmm. Get that cool. And therefore it's well said at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your point? I was diving into the computer for a moment. It's recorded. It follows that with the idea of the self, it never changes. Right. <laughs> it never becomes anything oh, other right. than itself. Right. Therefore, that expression is perfectly appropriate at that time. Mm. I like it. <clears throat> Why don't you see? If that is true, then we must look and never overlook this idea as we read. Right. Where does it surface? Okay? By the way, why is that important? Because when we now get into the time is, at E, 29E, this magnificent first paragraph is the whole cosmology, right? A theological cosmology. And it rests, it rests with one idea. Pardon? Why, why would you? Unto himself. I just was talking to myself. No, likeness. Should I ignore what you're saying? No. Rit, then make it clear. I was just thinking about what you were saying. And it's oh, something. don't do that. Well, it's unto himself. He's unto doing the, the yeah. God is turning upon himself, and unto himself mm -hmm. he's generating the universe. Would it not be important to see if that idea of self is in here? Yeah, it's tau right. Isn't that there? Oh, come that. on. And from 29E on. Yeah, it's, it's there. Not tau te. Hey, I'll tell you. Right before that. Did you know? Oh, okay. Hey, I'll tell Hey, I'll tell you. And tau te. No, the very word self is in there. Right. Yes. And therefore? We got good grounds for nailing it. Agree? Agree. It's Come on, get everybody with you on that, please. Divine. Yes, that would be uh, if you're in the lobe, E4, 29E4. Go ahead. Right, right before the period. Oh, well, let us now state the cause wherefore he that constructed it constructed becoming and the all. 
he was good, and in him that is good, no envy ariseth ever concerning anything. And being devoid of envy, he desired that all should be so far as possible like unto himself. Right there. And he would rather put it in terms. In what terms? Come on. Is this where you want to read the idea of the self? Well, it's right. The, the, what's translated as himself yes. is the word for self. Just the word for you don't need him. Oh, that's right. It's Adam. Well, so it should be a self with a capital S? Is that it? That's what, we're, that's what we're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not going to say he or him, you're going to have to say it. Yeah. It's so. See, if you look, it's Regina, so. since you're in the Greek, on E1, agathos hein, it's a third person singular verb. He was good. If you don't call it he was good, you have to say it was good. But are you invoking English grammar at this point? <laughs> what other grammar am I going to speak in? I don't know Latin grammar. No good. <laughs> okay, Great. let's go back. Okay, to the, go back to the issue. Well, you got to deal with How does he summarize that beautiful first paragraph? The whole thing is considered under one word. Take the last sentence in the paragraph. Thus he fashioned the all. That so the work he was executing might be of its nature most beautiful and most good. Here it is. Thus, then, in accordance with the likely account, we must declare that this cosmos has verily come into existence as a living creature, endowed, endowed with soul and reason, owing to the providence of God. The whole work is seen as nothing other coming from the providence of God. That's the self. Hey, the idea of providence means what? that which in principle distributes a particular good to all things most appropriate to them to meet their most ultimate needs in the moment. That's providence. <coughs> and that's the providence of God. So let's take a look at what's going to be included in this idea of the providence of God. Right. Ready? Uh, would you care to read further, sir? Sure. Put you to work? Go Wait, for what it. am I reading? Yeah. 29 E. Good. Starting. Okay. I'm glad. Okay. Let us now state the cause. Go ahead. Let us now state the cause wherefore he that constructed it constructed becoming and the all. He was good. And in him that is good, no envy arises ever concerning anything. And being devoid of envy, he desired that all should be so far as possible like unto himself. This principle, then, we shall be wholly right in accepting from men of wisdom as being above all the supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos. That's why the idea of likeness plays the major role in all Platonic thought. Mm -hmm. right? It allows an understanding of the relationship between model and copy. Because the key term between any model and copy presupposes likeness. So likeness is the supreme principle behind all creation. When a design is considered to be essential in the production of things. Right? Ah, major point. Go ahead. Wow. For God desired that so far as possible, all things should be good and nothing evil. Wherefore, when he took over all that was visible, seeing that it was not in a state of rest, but in a state of discordant and disorderly motion, he brought it into order out of disorder. 
deeming that the former state is in all ways better than the latter. Therefore, there is no creation and the time is. All right. Just an order. There is not a creation story in Christian terms. What is he doing? Ordering, order. Ordering. It presupposes there's some kind of pre-existing re condition. No creation out of nothing. Right. Good. Keep going. No creation out of nothing. Yes, no creation, strictly speaking. No. The creation is an order. It's not material coming into existence. Order. Go ahead. For him who is most good, it neither was nor is permissible to perform any action save what is most beautiful. As he reflected, therefore, he perceived that of such creatures as are by nature visible, none that is irrational will be more beautiful, comparing holes with holes, than the rational. And further, that reason or intellect cannot possibly belong to any apart from soul. So because of this reflection, he constructed intellect within soul and soul within body as he fashioned the all, that so the work he was executing might be of its nature, most beautiful and most good. Thus then, in accordance with the likely account, we must declare that this cosmos has verily come into existence as a living creature endowed with soul and mind, owing to the providence of God. Um, can you now tell me what is necessary for this kind of creation of order to come into being? Okay. What are the steps? What's required? <laughs> Devoid of envy. Devoid of envy. You have to have a mind. <laughs> hey, look That's a good beginning. You have, God has to, you have to have a mind. Why? Because you have to see there's disorder before you can bring in order. Oh, there's a mind at work. Is that the condition for creation? Yeah. Oh, then he's bringing in something, right? Look here. That's it's cool. a reflection. Based upon a perception. And that is that something needs to be done. There's a need, right? Because he's seen disorder. So wait a minute. If you're going to create in the way in which this is talking about creation, what do you need to look for? Chaos. Problem. Disorder. And you have to look at it and say, hey man, I think maybe it would be better to bring this into order. <laughs> oh. <coughs> oh. For what end and to what end will it be brought into existence? For what purpose? To order it. No, you must have a mind that appreciates beauty. Yes, and good, yes or no? Yes. 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 So, you're talking about the mind of this, pers this person or power, Right? That primarily is involved in beauty and good. He sees the disorder, reflects on it, sees it, has a basic interest in what? Beauty and goodness. Now he has to put it into, now he has to put it into practice, doesn't it? So how is he going to do it? You know what? I 
think I'll use myself as the model. Wait a minute. He's using himself, the self, as a model for creating. Is that correct? Come on, take a look. So therefore, look here. He has to then turn upon himself, which is an usia, right? And say, I'm going to use that, I'm going to use my own, I'm going to make that as good. Use my mind, I'll use myself as the model that I'll then make a likely copy of myself in the creation I'm going to put into order. Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. hmm, must think something about himself. <laughs> yeah. Is that likely? Mm -hmm. Let me make sure. So then, is this act of creation, of ordering, uh, based on the model, is this providence itself? Yes. This function of yes. ordering? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, Laura, come on, do something. Well, also, it's like if he's a demiurgic architect, he uses mind and soul as tools yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's mind and soul. Yes, yeah, that's right. Now you're in the operation. What is he going to do since he has this, uh, this understanding? Now what is he going to have to introduce? That's right. Look. And body. Notice, he now reflects on a condition that does not exist. Right? How so? Uh, would you read it again? Uh, just to hit that, uh, he brought it into a state of he brought it into order out of disorder, deeming that the former state is in all ways better than the latter. Okay, I, I gave the wrong one. That's B. He perceived, but he perceived that as such creatures as are by nature visible, none that is irrational will be more beautiful. Look, this is before they're created. He must already have that idea in his mind. Or that statement is not possible. <coughs> Agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, better be. <laughs> oh. Well, if that's true, then there is something pre-existing as a model that he can reflect upon before he uses it in this creation. Right, take a look. Read it again from that. Yeah. Um, he perceived that if such creatures as are by nature visible, none that is irrational will be more beautiful comparing holes with holes than the rational. See, it's because of this reflection that he does what he does. Mm -hmm. Keep reading, next sentence. And further, that, reason, that mind cannot possibly belong to any apart from soul. Go ahead. So because of this reflection, he constructed mind within soul and soul within body as he fashioned the all. Therefore, he can now act. What's the condition before he can act? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I was going to mention that it says here he perceived, but actually it's he discovered reasoning. Right upon reasoning, he discovered that from um, visible, right? Out of visible creatures, according, right? So it's not it's not a perception, no. but it is a reasoning, it's and, a that, reasoning. Mm, and that follow, is followed by the re the next reasoning. On this reasoning, right further, see, 
So because of this reflection, that's again reasoning. So it's just an ongoing process, right? But Starting with the reasoning about visible creatures, so then yes. that there's a discovery. Well, hold it. Just yeah, no, that's right. Just I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, that's good. Okay. That's what's true. Therefore, what true. kind of a god is it? A rational god? Yeah, a rational god. That has this background. Yeah. Who can then reflect in this way and reason about it before he acts? Right, that's right. Ah, but uh, and discover. God can discover. Yeah. yeah. And doing that process, it, it's like himself. Mm hmm. Therefore, he can declare. That this cosmos has truly come into existence as a living creature endowed with soul and mind owing to the pronoia of God. So the whole thing is a living Rash. creature. Rational. Come on. Mindful. Creature. Living creature. Soul. Living God's creature soul. endowed God's with soul and mind. Reason. mind. Soul and mind. Because of the problem of God. Pronoia. Because of the providence of God. The providence of God. Which, Which means? That's the word you gave besides providence. providence. Yeah, yeah, what's the noia? I know that other than the Greek word, would you give us something other than providence? Well, preconception. Well, the noia, preconception. Okay, that's the sound. Prior to his. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold it louder, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the pronoia, that's like you said, pre preconception. Well, yeah. the providence has the idea. I don't think I heard it. She's I'm just disagreeing yes. about the conception part. I mean, oh, I think okay. I think so Ingmar is going with what we have been talking about, which is prior to intellect. The providence is prior to intellect. That's right. So it's okay. providence literally means prior to the intellect. There is a goodness, a goodness, which then extends to all things. Yes. Appropriate to their need. Right. Therefore, it's the universe is in need of the goodness of God. Yes. What does the Gelestai mean? Become. Oh. No, no, no. What did you come to? Um, the Gelestai. The, the come into existence is what that's translating. Sure. So the providence comes into existence? No. No? Oh, okay. So it's because of the okay, providence. The this, cosmos has come into existence. This oh, cosmos, exactly. The providence of God. Yeah, what are you saying? Nothing. Okay. It's there. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Um, it's, you know, Pierre, Pierre, it's interesting too because pronoia is, uh, it's a noun, pronoia. Yeah, I, I, I won't, won't disagree. But, and what does that mean, Come on. Unlike nous, which is masculine, pronoia is feminine. So it's truth, and so is with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you make about the fact that the uh, feminine sneaks in again and again? Well, it reminds me of the queen. Yeah. The queen. king and queen. Yeah. 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 I was waiting for a grand conclusion. Well, I, you know, I'm going to sit on that one. Okay. Because you see, in the beginning, no, no, in the beginning, he mentions gods and goddesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, look here. Um, if I have an idea that I think you might enjoy listening to and comparing, do you think I should mention it? Or not? Oh, yes. What do you say? What do you think? What do you think? Yes. Huh? Yes. What? Do you think I should mention it? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, I said Oh, yes. okay. Okay. I know someone who's just worked on a prayer that precedes Proclus's great work. Wow. Yeah. And she therefore has been doing, as it were, comparing, and she can compare two invocations or prayers mm -hmm. that precede the writings of both Plato and the time is and Proclus. Yeah. So would you know who that might be? Well, I was. I made a comment this morning. I, I really just started on it. Um, Pierre suggested I would benefit through translating it. So so far, it's 
two pages like this. So far, I'm almost through with the first page. This is vocabulary. So I haven't got yeah, you're working on it. Um, yeah, but, uh, have you, so I think I'm working on it. Have you found this is some similarities? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I thought you might enjoy it. Have you found some similarities? Well, the, what, the one you were talking about was um, the Greek. that it's very interesting. If, if you notice on the first line, uh, Imar, do you see it says, this ukumai, el ukumai, of course, I pray. And then it says, to the gods. But it, then what's most fascinating, I haven't seen this before. It has all, so you could say, all masculine and feminine, or all male and female, right? Um, do you, right? Which is fascinating. Usually, when they're going to do male and female gods, they actually have theia and, right? They actually have the feminine form for god and the feminine form for goddess. But here they, they don't, and I think that's a function of, I think it's rather elegant, but I also think it's a function of this, of Greek at this stage of development, right? Because I haven't seen that before. You see what I'm getting at? No, unless you're referring to episteme, no. dianoia. No, elkomai, tois, uh -huh. theos, passi, oh, passi. I passes. Right? Oh, thank Pas you. Passice. Beer? Oh, <laughs> interesting. Oh, yeah, OK. All right. No, I thought. Passi. So, I mean, that that was what I was originally, unless there's something I've forgotten. Well, yeah. I remember Barbara saying that, that therefore the God, uh, saying that God signifies something above the two um, male and female, that God is a singular. And I thought that's what she would say. No, I just thought it was interesting. In a way, he's, uh, Proclus is giving an equal status to gods and goddesses by doing it this way as if they're a jet as if they're a genus mm -hmm. right I mean, mm -hmm. which is a lower mm -hmm. way of talking about it but um uh and it's very precise it's like all male and all female whereas um you know i have seen things like gods and goddesses but it's usually um first of all it's gods first second of all it's two terms Third of all, it doesn't talk about all, right? Well, I, I didn't know that. Well, I, no, I'm just talking about what I've seen and what I haven't seen. Right. And so, uh, what you, you have were seen, the one I'd like who to mentioned see that. Where I you sure. saw something in that, right? And what did you see in that, specifically? I forgot. I thought you were going to mention, is it likely there's some parallels between the two invocations that you've already noticed? Oh, that was his question. Parallel. Well, see, that is a parallel. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. But, um, uh, like, and what we, we were working with two Gina brought in a copy of Juan Balboa's uh, translation of the invocation. Uh, but I, frankly, I haven't yet looked at any further into it. But, okay, let me. No, ask. it's very similar. I mean, yeah. if you look at it, for example, it says, I pray to all the gods and goddesses to guide my mind in this study that I have undertaken and light up in me the splendid light of truth and unfold my understanding of the knowledge itself of the real beings and to open the gates of my soul to receive the inspired guidance of Plato so and by anchoring, yeah. This see, is a different idea of a prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what's going on. And it's and worth you, knowing what they're calling a prayer mm -hmm. or an invocation, mm -hmm. since it's so different the way we use it. And the other one right. is calling yes. upon, calling the gods. Remember, yes. we talked about that, that Tarnayas actually calls Kaleisas or something along that line. Yes, I become yeah. luminous. Yeah. Okay. And okay. also, the, well, I thought that Barbara brought in the idea that first, that the male and female came after the reference to gods that is a unifying mm -hmm. principle rather than gods and goddesses that which is as it's been translated so it captures a unification of the idea of gods and then broken down into all male and female and in the Timaeus he starts out with even a small share of good sense call upon God always at the outset of every undertaking and then later he says, how it was created or happily is uncreated must needs invoke gods and goddesses. 
So I'm seeing that it's, cur mm -hmm. it's capturing the same idea. First there's the principle of God, and then he breaks it down into God's you, and God's. Do you think, you think the dude may have been influenced by Plato? Mm. <laughs> yes. And, words, okay, that's it. And one, one other thing I thought was important. Let's quit there. Good place to quit. Hold on. Here. No, it's actually the C4. I'm happy to host uh, coffee and uh, uh, talk at my house tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and I'm, I'm sure Pierre is invited. And yes. Else. There is a little bit of problem. I'm having some roofing work done, so we may have to move out on the lawn or something like that. But we can adapt, but you're all welcome. Good. You don't get to sit on the roof? Oh, no. That's not what I said, Julie. Oh. <laughs> That's what Yeah, the, the, the word, how uh, is uh, this principle. What do you make of it? Where, where, where? That he starts at the What do you make of it? On well, that itself is the principle. Where? What do you make is of it? Come on, come on, come on. That uh, the self is what it is, the principle that upon which you're ordering, he's ordering the universe. Yeah. Okay. And using mind. That's making yeah. a good conclusion. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the birthday party. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.